Hey, I'm Matt. Today, I want to show you five more tools that will make your woodworking life much easier. These are five of those tools you didn't know you needed until now. So a few weeks ago, I put out this video and there was a lot of positive feedback from that. So I wanna show you five more tools that I really like. And if you're interested in any of these tools, there's links in the description below to all of them. This is the Cat's Moses Stop Block. I've got two of them on my crosscut sled. I've got a whole video on how to build this crosscut sled if you're interested it has an adjustable fence, it's awesome. What makes these Cat's Moses Stop Blocks unlike anything else, they're highly adjustable and they're accurate. They fit in a T-Track slot you can tighten them down. You can move them out, slide your stock behind it, and make a cut if you need to without having to actually take it off. One of the unique things about the Cat's Moses Stop Block is it has micro adjustment. If the piece you cut is just a little bit too long, all you have to do is micro adjust it, barely move it, tighten this back down. It's not gonna move. Now it's dialed in accurately. You didn't have to fumble with any of the big knobs up here. You're dialed in now. You can make all your cuts just like that. So you get up to one inch of micro adjustments. Another unique feature is it'll fit multiple size fences. So if you wanted a higher fence on this or even a miter saw station, if your fence is taller and you raised it and this was raised up, it would fit anything from two and a quarter to three and three quarters tall. And it has positive stops every half inch. Just take the brass screw out and then it adjusts to the height that you're gonna need that. Then you tighten that back down and it fits your size fence if it's taller. And really the star of the show of the Cat's Moses Stop Block is it doesn't deflect. I get a little ham hands as my wife says on some, most everything. And I tend to be a little rough with things. So this is perfect for me because even if you slam your workpiece into the stop block, it's not gonna move on you, it's secure. And that is huge when you're needing to make accurate, repeatable cuts because if it don't move, then you, your cuts are gonna be accurate every time. And we all know storage is awesome, so if you're not using it, you can just flip it around backwards on your fence of any kind. And this is either way, it stores easily, it's secure, it's not going anywhere, you're not gonna lose it. The thing's just awesome. Well, I'm sure Mr. Cat's Moses didn't intend for this to be used this way. You can put it on your workbench if you've got T-Tracks. Now you've got a, a temporary fence you can use for T-Tracks, especially if you've got a push clamp like the ones from Armor or Rockler or whoever you buy from. Lock that down, then you'll be able to work on that piece against that fence. So the Cat's Moses stop blocks are probably some of the best designed stop blocks on the market. They're highly adjustable. They don't deflect. They're very strong. Uh, they're just good product, just a good solid product. Every woodworker, I don't care who you are, you need a T-bevel. If you don't wanna to be too technical, this, this finds angles, or it can help you set an angle. You can actually take it to your miter saw. If you need to find an angle and you know that your miter saw is accurate, all you gotta do is move it over to say five degrees and lock it down. And then you can take your T-bevel and line it up and that's gonna give you a five degree angle. Let's say you're working on a project and you need this angle coming in to be a, at a certain angle, you don't know what to cut that at. You could obviously lay it up there and try to mark it however you want to do that. A much simpler way is just to have a T-bevel. Run it up there, you got your angle. All you gotta do is tighten that down. Then you can make this mark or take it to your miter saw and set this angle and now you'll be able to make accurate angle cuts without actually having to try to figure out what it is. It's just kind of an automatic set. They make all kinds of these sliding T-bevels. This is the one I've got, I've had it for ever it seems. I actually bought this when I was in construction, was doing more metal work. It's a pretty simple tool, but it's so useful to have in the shop to transfer angles from one piece to the other, or from one piece to the saw, or from the saw to a piece. However you need to do that, this thing is inexpensive, but handy to have. I recommend picking one up. I'll drop a link in the description to one that is highly rated and is very similar to this one. If you're interested, I don't think they make this one anymore since it has sears on it. So I don't have proper dust collection. I do have some dust extractor for my sanders that I've had for years. And while that keeps a lot of the fine dust out, I've always used RZ mask. Way back uh, on the channel, you go back and watch a lot of the videos where I was wearing an RZ mask. I like RZ mask. And while I know it's not a tool per se, it is a tool to keep dust out of your lungs and keep you healthy. Because if you're not healthy, you can't woodwork. This is a simple solution, especially if you're in a garage or a small workshop and you need dust protection. These things are extremely well made. They've got replaceable filters, so you can just pick the color you want. I've got a gray one, I've got a green one, and I also have the 2.5 red. This is the RZ 2.0, which means it just has one strap, Velcro enclosure, 
extremely easy to use. Has a metal band here on the nose so you can adjust it. When you get yours, it comes with a dust proof or dust resistant bag that you can store it in. It also comes with an extra filter, which is awesome. And all you have to do is twist these little keepers off and replace the filter and pop them back on. Extremely simple. They're this fabric mesh and they're very comfortable to wear actually. These are both the 2.0 models because they have a single strap. This is the 2.5 model. It actually has two straps. That kind of makes it a little more secure because you've got two points of contact now around your head and it's actually very comfortable. This actually feels, this is the first time I put this on. <laughs> yeah, I just got this one in. This one feels a little more secure than the 2.0, obviously because it has an extra strap. And these straps are adjustable and there's a sizing chart. Uh, I wear a size large. The filter lasts 20 to 30 hours of use in heavy dust. They're also great for allergens. If you have allergies when you mow the grass, things like that. It also has a carbon layer, which is effective against fumes and different things like that. A lot of times I use these when I'm painting, especially when I'm using my router or things that kick up a whole bunch of dust. I'll have one of these on. I like that they have replaceable filters. They have multiple colors if you like to choose different colors and some different designs, things like that. RZ Mass did send me the green one and the red one. However, I bought the gray one and have been using them for years that I bought on my own. So how to recommend them, link in the description. This is my home right Finish Max sprayer. I, I've had this thing for years. It's been on the channel. You've seen me paint tons and tons of stuff with it. It's a hundred bucks, give or take a few dollars. And while it's not a Fuji or anything like that, it's not a $500 paint sprayer, it's a hundred bucks. It works extremely well, especially for beginner woodworkers. Painting takes a very long time to do it by hand. That's how I started out, was trying to paint everything by hand. That was taking so long. So I wanted a paint sprayer and wound up with this Finish Max paint sprayer and it has been fantastic. I've painted oil-based as well as water-based. I like to paint water-based because it cleans up much easier, but I have used this for oil-based on our outdoor sectional. I sprayed an oil-based outdoor oil with it and it worked extremely well for that. It's very easy to clean up. It actually comes with three different tips and the only one I've ever used is the green one because I lost the other ones. So <laughs> you can adjust the flow of the paint and you don't need an air compressor, which is a huge bonus for me. When I started, I didn't have an air compressor. I actually, the air compressor that I have now sitting on the shelf over there isn't big enough to actually keep up with the HVLP guns that I bought. So I actually need to get a bigger air compressor. In the meantime, I'm still using this Home Right Finish Max. I can't tell you how many projects I've actually painted with this thing. It makes it really easy. You just pour the paint into the container and then plug it in and go. It's just a good product for hundred bucks. I mean, it's really hard to beat one of these if you're just starting out or you want a decent paint sprayer and you don't have $500 to go spend on a paint sprayer and you don't have an air compressor. If you go cheaper than that, I've heard a lot of problems out of those that are $40, $50. So this one has worked well for me and I think it will for you too. This rigid oscillating spindle sander changed my woodworking mind. Listen, if you've ever tried to sand curves and profiles with a orbital sander, you know how difficult it is, especially tighter curves because you can't get it to turn like that and make a good even curve. So enter the oscillating spindle sander. That's where it really shines. I had no idea how useful these things were until I got it in the shop. If you cut curves or sand curves or need to sand up to a line, especially on a curve or a profile, these things are invaluable. And for about 250, 260, this is a redneck's back road of sanding stuff. Let me show you. This is my stove cover handles. I've made hundreds of these things and I've always had to sand them with a piece of sandpaper inside. And on this profile, you can't get in there good. You still got some saw marks in there. It's just, it takes a very long time. As you can see here, I can use it to get inside of holes or circles. It goes anywhere from a half inch up to a two inch round circle or I can actually put the belt sander on and sand things flat, like the head of a mallet like you see here. It's just super fast. That took about 60 seconds to actually sand the inside of this handle. Now I've got a perfectly sanded inside of that handle. That would have taken me multiple minutes with a hand sander to try to get just hand sanding that out of there to get those saw marks, things like that out of there. Curves and profiles, this thing is what it's made for. Or you're needing to round over corners, things like that. This thing is perfect for that. Or like my mallet handles, you can see here, sanding up to a line that has a profile on it. This thing is phenomenal. So convenient. I should have bought one a years ago. This thing is awesome, awesome, awesome. So this is the rigid model. It 
I like it. It works extremely well. They've been out for a very long time. There's reviews on these dating back to 2012 or 2014, if I remember right. Win also makes a very similar looking model. I'll drop that in the description below. It's a little cheaper, about $50, $60 cheaper on Amazon. It is highly rated as well. They don't take up a whole lot of space. They're bench top. Uh, you can build carts for them. I have a plan to build cart for this as well as my other items like my planer and my jointer. What I like about this one is all the onboard storage for all of the washers that actually fill in right here. Uh, this plate to keep anything from getting down in there, bigger pieces. It also has storage for all of your spindles from two inch down to half inch. And then also these washers right here actually go on top. And then if you go around to the back, you'll see where the belt sander gets stored so it's out of the way and then there's a dust collection port. As far as dust collection goes on the spindle sander, while you're using a spindle, the dust collection works fairly good. There's a little bit of dust that winds up on the top. The belt sander, the dust collection is awful. I've seen some people rig up some dust collection on the end down here that actually allows to have more suction on top. But for a spindle, it works really good, which is the main use that I'll be using this for as well as curves and profiles. Oscillating sander also, the table drops down to a 45 degree angle or anything between there and zero. Especially if you had your belt on there, you could take your piece and run it up there and actually get a 45 degree chamfer just using a belt sander. I highly recommend getting a spindle sander for your shop. Time is money and this thing will pay for itself in time very quickly. If you like this video, click that box right there. It's gonna take you to five more woodworking tools you absolutely need in your shop. Clicking that box gets you that big old virtual fist bump. Also, another one of my favorite videos, you can click that box right there. Thank you for watching.